Good morning, my name is Clay Schuler. I'm an undergraduate biological engineering student at the University of Arkansas. Today I'll be presenting my research on quantifying potential urban heat islands in Fayetteville. Before I get started, I would just like to thank the Honors College and the University of Arkansas for helping to fund this research. Uh, to get started, we'll talk about what exactly is the urban heat island effect. Uh, it's a phenomenon that occurs when urban areas are warmer than rural areas. And there are really several reasons for this. Uh, the first is that rural areas have lighter surfaces compared to urban areas. So urban areas have darker surfaces. It leads to increased albedo, which means they absorb more heat from the sun, uh, which of course raises temperatures. Uh, also, urban areas have less vegetation, which decreases evapotranspiration rates. Evapotranspiration is the movement of water from the ground to the atmosphere, um, and it's known to contribute to atmospheric cooling. So when you have less vegetation, less green space, uh, you're going to have warmer temperatures. Uh, also, uh, structures and infrastructure in urban areas actually blocks wind, uh, and so therefore traps warmer heat. Uh, and finally, uh, emissions and pollutants from humans actually contribute to urban heat island effects. Uh, so this research really uh, looked at four objectives. The first is that we wanted to calibrate temperature sensors uh, so that we could deploy those in the field. We wanted to calibrate them to a standard measurement so that we'd have reliable data from, um, from our different locations. Um, and so after we calibrated those, uh, I wanted to build weather stations to house uh, the temperature sensors and other sensors to measure uh, weather variables. And I wanted to measure these uh, variables in the fall and winter months in Fayetteville. And then finally, I wanted to look at um, if students wanted to continue this research in the future, um, what recommendations might I have and, and possibilities of extending this research. So one of the most important parts of, of the project was actually choosing locations to take data from. Um, and so here you can see uh, in the top left, we have 1091 West Cassatt Street. Uh, represents a rural location. It's actually the University of Arkansas farm. Uh, so there's a lot of crops and grass, not a lot of buildings. Uh, so it represents a good rural location. In the bottom left, we have 754 South Royal Oaks Parkway. Uh, represents kind of more of a suburban location. You have some apartment complexes, houses in the area. Um, but in the kind of towards the center bottom of the photo, you can see there's actually a protected marshland. Uh, so there is still some vegetation, some green space present. Uh, and then on the right of the photo, you can see 240 North Block Avenue. Uh, represents a, a very urban location. It's near Dixon Street in downtown Fayetteville. Um, and so you have a lot of parking lots, restaurants, buildings, not a lot of green space. So here you can see the, the deployment of the stations. Uh, and so uh, we took data from, from November 12th, 2020 through January 16th of 2021, so representing those fall and winter months. Um, and I was actually able to go in and use a program, program called Bluebeam Review to actually estimate the percent imperviousness of a four kilometer squared rectangular area surrounding each station. Um, and so I was able to look at, at aerial photos from Google Earth and estimate uh, what percentage of the area surrounding this station was impervious area. Um, and so you can see the imperviousness decreases as you go from the urban location to the rural location. Um, so the step that I'm currently at in this research is, is analyzing the trends from the data that we collected. Um, and so this is still ongoing, but one trend that I found is that um, you can see on the left you have the daily average diurnal, which is daytime temperatures. Uh, and you can see that among the three stations it's fairly similar. You have uh, a little bit of fluctuation, but for the most part they, they follow a fairly similar pattern. Uh, it's actually the nighttime temperatures that you actually start to see differences uh, in temperatures. And there are two surprising things about this. Uh, first is that the, the suburban location actually has cooler temperatures than the urban and rural locations, which uh, given the percent impervious estimations, uh, that's not really what you'd expect. You would expect it to be somewhere in the middle um, and for the rural location to be lower. Um, and also, uh, Fayetteville's climate is very warm and moist, uh, and previous literature, previous research has generally shown that, that these areas experience the highest UHI effects in the daytime. Um, but this shows that you actually have greater temperature fluctuations at nighttime, um, at least in the fall and winter months, so that's something else that's surprising. Um, and finally, I have recommendations for future students who want to maybe continue this research and expand upon this research. Uh, first would be to analyze UHI trends in summer months. Um, so obviously in summer months it's warmer. Typically you see greater UHI effects uh, during those summer months. Um, so that would be my primary recommendation. 
Um, also, when, when determining areas to, to set weather stations, I think that maybe we should look at uh, smaller areas um, to calculate percent imperviousness. Um, so at a certain point, you know, you're kind of beyond that, that range that uh, any vegetation or impervious surface would really have an effect on, on the temperature readings of that sensor. Um, and so I think using smaller uh, areas might lead to more accurate percent imperviousness estimations. Um, and also placing weather stations at uh, additional locations uh, throughout the city. Um, you know, having a wide range of, of different areas with percent imperviousness differences and also differences in, in vegetation cover. Maybe some have trees and some def just have shrubs and some only have grass. I think um, um, having a wide range of locations that you can take data from would be very beneficial. And finally, um, my weather stations were able to take data on wind patterns, wind speeds, relative humidity, total global radiation, but I'm not really analyzing those trends and what effects that might have on UHIs. Um, and so looking at those other variables and how that might influence temperatures in urban versus rural areas, I think could be important. I'd like to off offer a special thanks to Dr. Brian Haggard, my research mentor. Uh, he's been a huge help throughout this process, uh, giving me guidance and advice. Uh, without him, this wouldn't have been possible, so special thank you to him. Uh, Dr. Thomas Costello, who helped me in the construction of the weather stations, uh, he was a huge help throughout that process. Uh, I'd like to thank Cardinal Group Management and Hill Place Apartments for allowing me to set my weather station on their property, um, and also Ryan Taylor and Duke College Better for letting me set uh, my weather station on their property. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day.